Hello, I'm Kasia Madeira. This is Outside Source. And after 270 containers fall off a ship, people in the Netherlands are finding chemicals, shoes and plastic ponies washed up on their beaches. Hello and welcome to the program. We're going to start in Washington, where members of the new US Congress are being sworn into office. Have a look at this scene, which was taking place at Congress. Well, Nancy Pelosi has been sworn in as the new Speaker of the House of Representatives. Her election to the post was expected. Here she is speaking just a little bit earlier. Now, one of the most pressing problems facing the new Congress is the government shutdown. There are 800,000 government workers who are not getting paid because of it. And here's a tweet from one of them. This is from somebody called Becky, who describes herself as an essential employee, who says, I'll get paid, but asks the question when, saying, we live paycheck to paycheck. I'm terrified that we won't be able to pay our mortgage, student loans, and other bills next month if this shutdown continues. Another one of these tweets, and there are lots and lots on the way on social media, is from a person called Heather Manners, who says that she's thankful that she has two jobs because I'm not getting paid at the TSA. She's referring there to the US Transport Security Administration. She says, I still have to show up, which means I have to work both jobs every day, sleeping two to three hours at night, just to not even break even on bills. And like I say, there are many, many, many more tweets like this under the hashtag shutdown stories. You can find out more about the fallout because there's a lot of it. It's not just parks and things that are being shut down. There are also people who are, like I say, not, not getting their paycheck, which is um, pretty important. Now, BuzzFeed is also talking about another one of the effects of this. It's uh, people not being able to get their marriage licenses because the marriage bureau wasn't deemed essential. So yet another one of the fallouts from this shutdown. Democrats are saying that they will pass new bills to end the shutdown, but they will not include any money for the wall, the uh, border wall between the US and Mexico. So President Trump isn't likely to allow them. Earlier, I spoke to Anthony Zerka on Capitol Hill to find out how long this shutdown is likely to go on for. Anthony Zerker in Washington, and yes, the repercussions of that shutdown are really serious, so they need to move it on. Now, let's bring you up to date with another story, because at 2.26 GMT today, China became the first country to successfully land a robotic spacecraft on the far side of the moon. And this is the first close-up image of that, the far side of the moon ever recorded. The probe, which is called Chang'e 4, touched down on the moon's largest and deepest crater. Now have a look at this animation as the far side of the moon is all the Jade Rabbit rover also called the U22 will explore the surface and it's going to also conduct lots of experiments and you may be wondering what's so special about this side of the moon. Well here's an article by our science editor David Shukman and he says that this could be a source of minerals even energy and so China was really hoping to harness all its available natural resources. Well, here's the man himself with a bit more. The Environment Secretary has warned that farmers and food producers face considerable turbulence if the UK leaves the EU without a deal. Many British exports currently reach European markets through the narrow straits between Dover and Calais. Hello, welcome. You're watching Outside Source live from the BBC Newsroom. Our lead story. Some of the other stories that we're monitoring here in the BBC Newsroom. Now, let's turn to South Korean intelligence officials who are saying that North Korea's deputy ambassador to Italy has disappeared. This is Cho Song Gil. He and his wife are reportedly seeking asylum in a third country, but we're not actually sure exactly where. He was last seen leaving his residence in Rome in November last year, but uh, high profile detections from North Korea are rare because the consequences for family members left behind are thought to be severe. Now, the last senior diplomat to defect was the deputy ambassador in London. Tae Hong Yo abandoned his post in 2016 along with his wife and his children. He defected to South Korea. The Rebecca has more from the South Korean capital, Seoul. 
15. Yes, the mystery continues. We'll keep an eye on that one. Now, shares in Apple have taken a sharp downward turn after it reduced expected revenue for the end of 2018 by $5 billion. And this is what it looked like on the stock market. It fared after trading opened in New York, falling more than 9% before recovering just slightly. And this was the letter from the CEO, Tim Cook, breaking the news yesterday. In it, he blames sales in China for most of the revenue losses. And he says that while we anticipated some challenges in key emerging markets, we did not foresee the magnitude of the economic deceleration, particularly in greater China, he says. But just have a look at this slightly alternative view from a journalist Matthew Keyes who says that Apple has managed to blame everyone for its woes. It blames China, tariffs, customers, I think this is tongue-in-cheek, who replaced batteries in their phones. Yes, Apple has blamed everyone except Apple. To get more on what's behind this fall from grace, let's cross over to San Francisco to speak to Dave Lee who joins us live now. Dave, is it fair to be so uh, harsh on Apple? Should they have foreseen this? Dave in San Francisco, as always, many thanks. At Dave Lee BBC, if you want to follow him on Twitter, always uh, good to hear what he's saying. Now, not just last year was also a bad year for many of America's automakers. Its biggest General Motors source uh, sales fall by 2.7% in the last three months of the year, while Ford saw uh, sales fall 8.8% .8 in December. What is going on? Let's talk to Michelle Flurry, who joins us from New York. Michelle, so is this um, is this all cars, or is this uh, something to show us about the bigger picture of what's going on in terms of in terms of uh, the international markets? Well, we're waiting to find out any moment now what the kind of final tally will be for car sales for the year in America. And, and the figure that's being bandied around is 17.2 million. Now, if that turns out to be correct then we've seen sales over 17 million since 2015 here in the United States. Uh, pretty impressive, record levels. And yet, if you look at what's been happening to the stocks of these companies, these car makers today, they've all been negative because people believe the future will not be as good as the past few years has been for the industry. And a lot of that has to do with uh, the fears driving the markets in general at the moment, which is the prospect that perhaps growth is decelerating, slowing down, or in some parts of the world, maybe we're talking about a recession. In that particular instance, if you do have a slowdown, then one assumes people buy less cars, uh, and that's where that anxiety creeps in, sort of the similar message we're hearing from Apple at the moment, this, this concern that consumers are not going to be uh, rushing out to buy new vehicles. Perhaps they'll be spending more money on second-hand vehicles or holding off car purchases completely. Oh, Michelle, so they're blaming the consumers as always. Michelle Flurry, many thanks. Lots more as always on our website. And if you want to get in touch with the team, it's hashtag BBCOS. We'll see you for the next edition of Outside Source in just a moment. Hello, welcome back. We're going to take you straight to the United States where the president is speaking. Let's listen into what he's saying to date with the rest of the day's news. And we're going to go to... Saudi Arabia prosecutors there have called for the death penalty for five of 11 men who are on trial for the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Now, you'll remember that the Saudi journalist's murder sparked international outrage when his killing were, took place inside the country's consulate in Istanbul in Turkey back in October last year. Now, Saudi Arabia has not named the men on trial, but they certainly don't include this man. This is, of course, the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Western intelligence agencies and U.S. senators say that they believe that he ordered the killing. Mr. Khashoggi was one of the Crown Prince's most prominent critics. That's led to doubts about the trial. For instance, if you have a look at this a tweet from the AFP Riyadh bureau chief saying that there is an immense amount of international interest in this trial, but also a lot of suspicion about whether those ultimately responsible for the crime will be held to account. Well, Saudi authorities deny that the Crown Prince was involved. A little earlier, I spoke to the BBC's Middle East analyst, Alan Johnston, who has more on this story for us. 
Alan Johnston on the start of that trial. Now, scientists say that they have solved the mystery of the source of Yemen's cholera epidemic. This is the worst in recorded history. It started in 2016 and it's affected one million people. It's caused nearly 3,000 deaths. Now, researchers say that they've identified the particular bacterial strain of the disease that has caused it. They say that they think that it comes from East Africa and that it entered Yemen with the migration of people in and out of the region. That's despite the really bitter civil war that's been going on for three years in the country. Professor Nick Thompson is one of the researchers involved and he's written this article if you want to get some more background on this. A little earlier I spoke to him for more.